as I was doing my A-levels, I decided I want to pursue economics further, and I looked around at the different courses, and the one at Oxford really caught my eye. I started out as a physicist um, because that's what I was good at and I enjoyed uh, trying to work things out. And uh, one of the things that interests me now, I'm, I've moved across fields into thinking about economics and management, is lots of that puzzle solving and model building skills can be carried across. None of the other courses that I'd considered had enough to kind of stimulate me for three years because you have to remember that it's not like school where you're studying lots of different subjects at the same time so if you get bored of one subject I'll just do this piece of homework no you have to live breathe this subject for three years the economics and management program is an academic course and um, taught as a social science so uh, it's not an MBA it's not a business studies degree um, if you want a business studies degree, this is not the programme for you. Um, if you want to do an MBA, you can come back. Just doing one or the other is fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but it, it's a bit more specialised than if you do them together. They can really complement each other and you can see the similarities and differences in opinions between uh, management academics and economists. In the first year of the programme, all the students take three courses. Um, financial management, general management and introduction to economics. Economics here is uh, a little bit less maths based but I felt it was more applicable to um, the real world. In the second and third years the students choose eight papers. You can use your modules to specialise into a few areas but no matter how deep you go in you'll always have a broad view of the entire subject. One of the interesting things that differentiates our course from other people is that we give students immediate exposure to the research literature in management. Oh, well, I do two modules a term, so I'll have, for economics at the moment, I have three lectures, and for strategy, you have a one, two hour lecture, and then two tutorials a week. I teach the course in operations management, and I take students around the, the mini factory, which they found fascinating because the stuff that we talk about in the lecture course is actually there, happening. I've never been to a factory or anything before, and I quite like cars and stuff, so it was really fun, and it was a great experience to walk around and see all these people doing the things that you study. The economics department in the business school uh, work well together as we, as we run this joint programme. Um, it's a little bit difficult from the point of view of the students because the economics department and the side business school are located diametrically opposite um, in Oxford. So, they're, so as well as a diary, you'll need a bicycle. E&M students spend a lot of their time reading. Uh, in fact, students who don't want to spend a lot of time on their own reading in a library really shouldn't do this course because it's a very heavy uh, on uh, independent study, learning, writing essays every week. As it turns out, we've got the best facilities in the world for people to do that. I can see the, the spires of the Bodleian from my window, from my bedroom window. So every morning I wake up to the thought that there is this bank of knowledge at my disposal. There is nothing I can't know um, if I wish, if I so wish to find it out. We also have fantastic IT facilities and online libraries and access to uh, databases of journals. I think the side business school is probably one of the most useful things that you can use when you study economics and management. We're introducing some new techniques of pedagogy. Um, for example, in the finance course, we're bringing in some people from the financial industry to work with students in, in seminars. When undergraduates come to Oxford, they're not just uh, studying a great course which is taught well, which is interesting, and has good uh, course design and all the rest of it. They're joining a community in Oxford, which is one of the most lively intellectual places to be on the planet. And there's a constant stream of uh, business people, political leaders, uh, NGO representatives, uh, all sorts of interesting people coming through. I think the most important thing, there's always someone to go to. Whatever problem you have, you can find someone to help you. So I suppose the best resource is maybe the people.
The core of the teaching in uh, Oxford, across most of the degrees, is the tutorial. The tutorial system um, encourages students to think and write and discuss. You have a matter of days to read, plan, write the essay and then in the tutorial it culminates in you being able to hold a discussion with a world expert um, which is which is a mad I think. Sitting opposite somebody with like two other people, one other person and having them ask you these questions and sometimes they're things that you wouldn't have thought about before or thought about in that way. It's, it's a little bit surprising and you know you sit for a moment a bit stunned but then you eventually come up with an answer and you think it through. If you've got lots of burning questions, this is the place to answer them because you are talking to the expert. You can explicitly say, you, you can literally just interrupt the, the conversation and say, but what about this point? But what about this? And I actually don't agree with what you've said here. Like, you, you have the freedom to do that. You can't escape from it. Every week, relentlessly, you've got to see your tutor and hand in the work. Um, so you don't get the opportunity to slack. When you reflect back to what you used to think or what you used to know and then you think about everything you've learnt and what you know now sometimes it's very different and your opinions can change massively. Having assumptions that you've carried with you for you know a lifetime, have, having them torn down, having notions that you take to be given need to be fundamental deconstructed so that you're you're seeing a lot more of yourself a lot more of your own thinking you begin to be more aware of why you think these things how this impacts on the way you interact with people the way you interact with the organization the way organizations interact with each other um, that's incredible when we're looking to recruit students on economics and management it's really simple and many people when i explain this to them don't believe me, they think there's some other catch to it. But really, we're only looking for one thing. Uh, are people really interested? Are they curious? Have they got a lively mind? Are they really genuinely, personally interested in the subjects we want to teach them? Occasionally people come and apply to us and they say, well, I'm interested in the subject or I've read this one book about something. And that's kind of hard because what we really want to do is people have not just read the book that someone has given them, but they've gone off and found their own things that they're interested in. Read the newspapers, um, put together a little reading group with your friends at school, um, take it in turns to buy the papers and compare what the different papers say. Go in there as relaxed as you can be and focus on what they're asking you and try and formulate a, a sensible answer. I would hope that students who leave this course have a much deeper understanding of the world around them and the forces which shape it. I would also expect them to have the confidence in their own abilities to know that they can go out there and make a difference. I talk to a lot of people on this course and they're hugely ambitious with what they want to do. It's not just about moving and being someone in the world. They want to be the person in the world. They want to have an impact. I know I definitely want to go into business. So, you know, careers such as consulting you know, and branches within that are definitely an option but I think ultimately what I want to do is kind of work on the African continent. I think after university uh, I definitely want to get a job. I think I'm finished with studying now uh, and I think I want to do consultancy for a little while. If you're interested in understanding why things are the way they are and ask yourself questions like, well, how does stuff get into shops? How did it get there? Um, or, can't, couldn't, isn't there a better way of doing this? So if you find yourself asking questions like that, I think you'll enjoy this course.